Hi, in our sixth tutorial, let's start to look at how we can take data from users and start to do various things with it. Okay, so we've talked about outputting. There is more we could talk about, but that will do for now. To input data to a computer, we use the input function in Python. This is also built in, like SDR and print. We'll look at how we can make our own functions in future videos. A function is sort of containing some code and it performs a particular job in this case inputting is allowing us to type stuff in printing is showing stuff on a the screen they're performing jobs which in the case of built-in functions are difficult for us to do ourselves and so the inventors of python have been kind and have done certain things for us and we can use these functions in our code so input we have the identifier which is input and followed by our brackets inside of brackets is where you put some data which the function can use in the same way that print had the string um, inside or the number or the variable so we can run this code now with an empty bracket so nothing is supplied to input and we just get a cursor on our shell and i can type stuff in here and press enter but nothing is happening because nothing is happening with our input so what I can do is set this input to be a variable. So let's call this uh, user input. I can't call it input because input is used by the input function. So if I now run this again and type in QWERTY again and press enter, again, nothing's happening because all we're doing is just sa saving this value QWERTY to this variable. So let's do this a third time, but now print out user input down here and let's run it again. First time lucky, QWERTY, and now we are saving our variable and then immediately printing out to the user. Of course, in a proper program, we do some processing after this step. And you'll notice when I run this, that initially nothing shows up, which isn't very useful to the user. If the user has no idea what to input, or even if they're meant to input. So what we can do is have a print statement say above the input, but also we can supply a message inside this input. The message is going to be text and so it will be a string. So I can say enter your, I don't know, age. Or let's do, we did price, enter, enter the price, like that. And now we can stop this and run it again. And it will now be clearer to the user what they're doing. And you can see we, we can actually type in the price after this. If I type in five, and press enter, I get five outputted like this. And if I get rid of this first print statement and just replace it with the one we had before, with my separator, which is an empty string, an empty string being just two quote marks back to back. So if I run this, we'll get what we had before, except it now adapts to what we are inputting. So if I do instead 10, and press enter, we get the price being 10 pounds. So immediately it's much more useful to us. All right, let's do a tiny bit of manipulation to this value. In the UK, the sales tax is 20% for VAT, 20% of 10 is two. And so in total, we want the new price to be 12 pounds once you've added the tax. In some countries like America, you um, they don't put the tax on until you actually buy the item, which is quite annoying. So what we could do, we could do user input times with the asterisk 1.2, because 1.2 is increasing the value by 20%. Or we could shorten this using an augmented assignment and just go times equals 1.2 because we want to update user input with this latest value. And then if I do something very similar and copy this and just change this to something like the post, the post tax price is what? I If I now run this, let's see what happens. So first of all, I'm prompted again for the price. I can put it in, it's put in 10, press enter, and we get an issue. So actually it's printing out the price initially perfectly fine. This is this line, line four, that's working fine. But then it stops working in line six, which is where we are doing this augmented assignment. This type of error is a type error, meaning we've got some issue with our data type. It's because it's saying we can't sequence by non-integer of type float, which is a little bit hard to understand. But the issue here is that this value of user input, if I prove this by saying print, and use another built-in function called type, user input if I just comment out these two lines commenting is really good because you can get rid of certain lines make them not run when we are trying it if I try this again we'll see that actually this input is going to be a string so class for class the type of the input user input is a string not a float or an integer which would be fine for this calculation so the issue is it's trying to multiply what it thinks is a, a some text with the value 1.2 and it can't do that and it can't do that because it's not the correct data type
We need to do that casting, which I talked about earlier. Let's get rid of this line. That's me just showing something. So we need to convert user input to be a float. And because float is quite a short word, the casting function for this is just float. It's not a shorthand version. And we can apply this casting at a few different points. It's got to be before user input here. So just to make it quite readable, let's just add in a line here where we are setting user input. We're changing the assignment from a string into a float. And so we can do this. There are a few ways you can do this, but I think this is fairly readable. We're changing user input, which is a string at this point, into a float, and then this code should work. So I'll type in 10, press enter, price is 10 pounds, and the post tax price is 12 pounds. It doesn't look particularly pretty, but I would personally try and convert it at the earliest opportunity. So do it right at the top when you are, you want to wrap your input, which is where the actual value 10 is coming from as a string, wrap that in a float casting operation, and then it will change straight away. So actually this line, line six, is no longer needed. And you'll see the difference is that it says here the price is 10 pounds with a decimal point. It's because already at this point, that 10 is a float, not a string, because I've done it in the second line. Now pause the video on this slide and have a look at these questions. Two and three require you to do some programming. If they are too easy, if you can do them really quickly, then try and expand and try and increase the challenge by changing the problem to extend it.